Kai, what did this thing do? Oh, uh, it makes stuff cool. It makes stuff cool. Whoa. That, that's not supposed to happen. Yeah. Hey, we have a on knee. This, this isn't good. You know what, it, it's fine. It's just a little wardrobe malfunction. Nothing we can't handle. Where the heck did this Corvette come from? Does, does he even have a license? <laughs> no, he does not. Well, we should probably put this somewhere safe. No, Josh, don't! With the Celsius line of all-in-one liquid coolers from Fractal Design, it's easy to stay cool. Click on the link in the description for more info. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. So I got to fess up to something. Back in April, I built this fantastic machine. This was April's PC of the month, the budget 1440p gaming rig for $850. But unlike most other PC of the months, I did not follow through with a part two, giving you guys the full look at all the gaming benchmarks, thermals, acoustics, and all that jazz. So uh, yeah, that was that was my bad. I'm sorry that some of you guys have been waiting on that for so long. I kind of got swept up with the Hawaii trip I took with my family, then Computex right afterwards. It's just been complete madness for the last couple of months. So finally the dust has settled, and I can now give you guys some performance numbers on this PC. So you can go ahead and watch the build video on that if you haven't seen it yet. But just as a quick refresher, we are rocking a Ryzen 5 1600 processor that's a 6 core 12 thread part, which I have overclocked for this test to 3.9 gigahertz on all cores. That's running stable at the stock voltage. I didn't touch the V core or anything. 3.9 gigahertz, guys, so that's, that's fantastic. Uh, along with 16 gigs of G Skill Rip Jaws 5 DDR4 at 3200 megahertz rated, but unfortunately, even with the latest BIOS update, I was only able to get it to run at 3066 megahertz, which isn't a huge step down, so it shouldn't affect affect our, our frame rates that much. Um, so I'm pretty, um, I'm, I'm okay with that for now. And then we've also got the RX 580 from, this is the power color, uh, Red Devil. And this card comes factory overclocked out of the box. So just to be mindful of the thermal limitations here, inside of the spec alpha case from Corsair, I decided not to overclock the GPU any further and just run out of the box settings. It's still well above reference speed. So, so it has that going for it. But overall, I uh, did not really touch anything on the GPU. Apart from that, we are running on the B350 chipset from AMD. This is an Asus Prime B350 Plus motherboard, again with the latest BIOS. And uh, the one shortcoming, the one big downfall to this system that I specifically even mentioned in the part one video was that it only has a single mechanical hard drive. So I, I did also mention in that video that if you had any sort of even like 60 to 80 bucks to spare to seriously consider buying an SSD and there's the alarm on my phone going off, mother of. So if you had any wiggle room at all with your $850 budget, again, an SSD, even a 128 gig SSD, I feel like in a budget system would be totally worth it. Just install your operating system and a couple basic programs, your web browser, etc., and leave everything else to the mechanical hard drive. That way you can still save a ton of money as, as opposed to going with like a 240 or a 500 gig SSD, but still benefit from the faster load and boot times. So let's talk about thermals. Our Ryzen 5 1600 actually spiked up to 86 degrees Celsius at one point, but it was kind of an outlier. I didn't see it go or reach into the 80s any other time during our 15, 20 minute run in GTA 5. In actuality, the package hovered in the mid 70s pretty much the entire time, which uh, considering that we're only using the included Wraith Spire stock cooler, uh, that came with the CPU, that's actually not bad at all. So I'm happy with that. The GPU, uh, again, all these thermals were tested uh, with an ambient temperature of 27 degrees Celsius in my room and with the side panel on, uh, despite what you see here. The GPU got up to 76 degrees Celsius. So yeah, I think there was, there's also a little bit of thermal headroom there if we did want to go in and dial in an overclock to see, to see how much further we could push the Red Devil here, the RX 580, then I feel like we probably could afford a couple more degrees uh, before we get into like the, the low 80 terabytes which is where I usually personally like to cut it off. So after spending a whole day gaming on this system, the thermals seem pretty reasonable, all things considered, which isn't too surprising because we've got a really nice airflow path in the spec alpha. We've got two 120s at the front, one, one 120 at the back. It's kind of a nice uh, front to back 
path of airflow that we have here. And that sort of leads us into acoustics. So the overall noise emissions of this chassis were pretty impressive. Um, the case fans for one are linked up to the, uh, the, the built-in fan controller on the spec alpha, which I had on the middle setting. So there's low, medium and high. We were running it on medium the entire time. Very quiet fans, uh, surprising for, for such a cheap case. And the uh, Wraith Spire on its own is just freakishly quiet without sort of any, any kind of tuning involved. Uh, the one caveat here was the graphics card, which did emit a degree of coil whine, which is not terribly noticeable with the side panel on. You almost have to be in a room with zero ambient noise to even pick it up. So thankfully it's not too noticeable in this chassis. However, if you're considering this graphics card and in the event that these particular models are known to cause any element of, of coil whine, then beware that you're not picking up a chassis that has a ton of ventilation, open mesh or something on the side panel uh, closest to the graphics card, because then there will be a lot of sound bleed and it will get obnoxious, I think. So uh, just something to bear in mind. But I think on that note, we can go ahead and talk about uh, gaining benchmarks. I ran six games in total at two resolutions at 1920 by 1080, and of course, 2560 by 1440, which again, this is being advertised as a budget gaming rig for that resolution for quad HD, so to speak. Um, but that being said, there's, uh, you know, people have their different preferences on the frame rate range that they like to game at. Some people are perfectly happy with, you know, 50s and 60s on average. Other people are like, hell no, nothing below 75 IMO, you know, or whatever it is. So because of that, I decided to run both resolutions just in case you were considering specking out a future system similar to this one but maybe you don't, you're not very happy with the 1440p numbers we're about to see, then at least you know what you could achieve at 1920 by 1080. So Windows 10 64-bit, all the latest Crimson drivers have been installed and we're using the newest BIOS version for our motherboard. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor that I finally present to you the long overdue benchmarks for our budget 1440p gaming rig. be your benchmarks, ladies and gentlemen. What do you guys think overall? Let me know, what do you think about the 1080p versus the 1440p numbers? Are, are the average frame rates enough for you guys? Or like, where, where are we at here? Where are we at? Is, the, is Do you see those numbers and be like, could be a lot faster for the money? Or do you see them and be like, that's a respectable and reasonable average frame rate to be running at? I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments below. My personal opinion, I mean, based on the results, just to quickly recap, at 1440p, uh, we were seeing anywhere from the 50s to the 70s in terms of average frame rates, which I think is perfectly adequate for the, the games that we were running, a lot, a lot of which, many of which, all of which were AAA titles, um, most of which were running at max settings, with the exception of GTA 5, that was a blend of high and very high, no anti-aliasing, things like that. But for, for the most part, I think that's pretty solid. And at 1080p, we were seeing, I would say, 20, 20 frames per second of an increase on our average frame rates, and even on the uh, the 1% and 0.1% lows, going from 50s and 70s range to now 70s and 90s range, um, which I think is absolutely fantastic for the money again. But uh, there you guys have it. I can't stress this enough though, if you are gonna build this system, include an SSD if you possibly can, because it is going to improve the overall experience, not just with your gaming, but with your general day-to-day -day tasking and computing as well. So. Um, that's pretty much, I've run, once again, run out of things to say, so I'm just gonna call it quits right here, guys. Finally, the results have been given to the public. Let me know what your thoughts are. As always, guys, toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and feel free to subscribe to the channel for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. You can also check out Bitwit Ultra, my ad-free early access channel for a buck fifty a month. The first two weeks are completely free and you can bag out any friggin' time. As always, I'm Kyle Bitwit. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good one, and I'll see you in the next video.